Hey guys, I'm gonna show you uh, today uh, double simultaneous double M98 Zoller sump pump uh, failure. I'm in my truck right now and I would be showing you the pumps, but there's a tree company next door doing some hard work and, and they're, um, they're grinding up some limbs. So um, I don't wanna be out there talking and then you guys can't hear me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna voice over, but I'm gonna show you exactly what I'm doing and how I found the failure. So let's get right into it. All right, so here's our system right here. Um, the customer had called and said that the pumps, whenever you plugged them in, they both have their own um, uh, designated, dedicated GFCIs. Um, so when I when I first heard that both of them were tripping, I was like, well, there's something wrong with the connection, the conduit was damaged, and he had said there was a landscaper there doing irrigation work, and I said, okay, well, that's definitely what happened. And I went over there, and they're of course, they were both tripping the GFCIs. And, um, yeah, so the first thing I did was just go in there and, and try to plug them into a different GFCI and troubleshoot that. And of course that wasn't the issue. So here's the issue right here. Um, you can see I already have the other one opened up, but when I pop this one open, um, you can see it's full of water. So that's not, uh, that's not typical. I've, I've never seen that before. Um, and, and obviously the, the water between the, um, hot, the neutral on the ground uh, was was shorting out the, the electrical connection and, and that's where the failure was. So I'm not sure if it was the gasket that failed or where the actual power um, inlet for the pump is for the cord right there. Um, so I'm not quite sure. Um, I've never seen this happen before to both pumps. I mean, it, it was a failure on both pumps, so I'm not sure why it happened um but we were working short on time we had a big storm coming the next day or excuse me not the next day but like two days from now and, and it's past that point now and it was a huge storm so i'm happy i did what i did um but i'll show you exactly how i went about fixing this i have quite a few of these solar pumps in the ground probably around 75 or so um mostly single pump systems and i've never had any issues um, with them. If I usually get a call and it's tripping the GFCI, what the pump's doing is kind of saving itself or, you know, it's just shutting off because the two biggest problems are usually the discharge line is blocked um, or the impeller is obstructed by like a rock or some kind of stick or something like that. So I, I first thing I always do is check for those two issues. And if that's not the issue, then, um, then I can start, you know, popping screws on the uh, uh, pump itself. Um, I, if you're a homeowner, I wouldn't recommend, you know, opening the pump at all. If, if you can, if you can help it. I mean, you know, if you're in your first three years, I would suggest you try to get a warranty and just replace the pump. You know, um, you know, don't, don't do this. It'll, it'll probably avoid the warranty, obviously on the pump system. It's not the way they were designed to be, you know, tampered with, et cetera, et cetera. So what I'm going to use is that metal silicone I just showed you there, and I'm just going to put a thick bead of it, like, and I'm just going to overkill it around there and around the entryway for the cord, as you see on the inside and outside. Um, you could probably encapsulate the electrical connections, but this silicone I'm not super familiar with, this metal silicone, so I don't know if it's going to conduct electricity or not. So we're not going to do it um, on the electrical connections. All right, so I got the big fat bead of silicone there. Um, you know, in a perfect world, I get two new pumps from Zoller tomorrow, but that's just not what's going to happen. So if I don't get the system running in the next couple of days, uh, we're going to be in a lot of trouble because I'll show you later exactly what this system does for this homeowner. All right, I've got the screws back in there or the um, bolts, if you want to call them that. They're not really screws, but... Anyways, uh, they're nice and secure in there. And just to make a note, they were finger tight, you know, on the top and bottom um, of this pump. So maybe that's just a factory defect. But if you order enough of these things, I'm sure that, you know, unfortunately you'll have one or two in the time that'll um, cause you some issues. But uh, I just want to show you the impeller here. That's why I have the bottom off. There was no issue there. But uh, usually there's a rocker stick obstructing this wheel here, this impeller. All right, the grinding has stopped for the time being. So I uh, just wanted to kind of give you an update. I want to do the same thing that I did to this one, do this one. And uh, yeah, I've already explained most everything, but this is pretty surprising to me to say the least. But um, I went ahead and gave this a uh, silicone bead down here as well. This is where the impeller is. Um, and 
yeah, so, you know, that those were finger tight as well. So um, I gave these a tight end. And, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and let this dry out a little more. While that's drying, I'll do my silicone job here, and I'll show you what that looks like. All right, guys, I was reading into the silicone a little more, this specific silicone. And a lot of common silicones take a lot longer than 30 minutes to be submerged. So um, we're going to give it 24 hours. It says eight hours minimum, and uh, I'll be back tomorrow morning to install these pumps back in there. So, push. All right, it is the next day around noon, and the silicone is nice and set up nice and hard just like it would be on a fish tank or anything like that so let's go ahead and get these pumps set back in i'm going to make sure they're unplugged and i'm going to reinstall them um and then i will show you what the discharge looks like when we first plugged them back in so let's get that done tell you what this water was cold i don't know what the temp was but my hands were were feeling it so yeah that's why you see me taking a break right there and scrunching my fists trying to warm my hands back up Um, you know, on a, pro on a private property, you don't need to, you know, install unions or anything like that. Uh, you know, your, your check valve is your union and we have to have a check valve on this system. It, it's strictly climbing uphill and I'll kind of explain that, but this was best case scenario for this property. There's absolutely nowhere to gravity feed any drain system. So this is what we opted to go with, but yeah, I'm just getting these back in, getting the electrical, um, you know, kind of back and neat and organized the way I like it looking and, um, yeah. I was just kind of thinking when I was reinstalling these how crazy it is that they both failed. And obviously, you know, they were sitting underwater like they are now um, for an extended period of time. But these are advertised as submersible sun pumps. I don't know if that's only for 24 hours or what the disclaimer is. I guess I'm not enough of a pump expert to tell you definitively. But, yeah, I mean, they, they should be able to be submersed. So I was also thinking back and I got these pumps on Amazon. So maybe that's the reason that we had the failure. I don't know. Um, you know, they they came in normal M98 sump pump boxes, but I usually get them from sump pump direct or some other reputable online sump pump dealer. So I don't know. I was trying to think about everything and why I had the failures on these pumps. So. All right. got both the pumps back installed in there. Got the cords zip tied back up out of the water where I want them. And I don't see any air bubbles coming up, so that's a good sign right off the bat. So let's go ahead and get these plugged in. I'll show you what the discharge looks like when we first do that. There's uh, quite a bit of water backed up in the system. wasn't really the best example um, when it's raining hard this thing's continuously pumping water out but this is kind of the setup we have we just installed this like i don't remember you know seven months ago maybe the grass is still healing up and haven't had one um, issue out of it and had a lot of heavy rainstorms and it's just been performing super well so you know, uh, the reason it's not constantly flown out of here is because this pipe's pretty loaded up with water. And, you know, I told the homeowner, that's a nice, beautiful home. Um, I told the homeowner that, you know, we might have to replace these pumps every couple of years and that'll be like 700 bucks to him or whatever. And he was fine with that because there's really no other way to solve this. Um, this is a huge grade decline heading that way. And the sump system is in front of my truck over there. So those two pumps are moving the water in a three inch line all the way up here. It's about 160 feet. So probably a little more than they're rated for, but it's been working really well. And, you know, like I said, as long as the homeowner knows that, you know, hey, disclaimer, these pumps aren't going to last, you know, six, seven, eight years like they typically do or they have before. Um, and as long as they're okay with that and it's written somewhere in the quote, then I'm fine with installing something like this. But... Um, this is really the only drainage catch basin they have in the whole property around this whole residential community. So, yeah. All right. So, everything looks pretty good. They're back uh, back at how I want them to be. So, um, this is our main six-inch line for the basketball court. Uh, it comes one, two, three catch basins. It comes down this way. This basketball court um, would flood with about a foot of water. And you can kind of see 
the lip of the grass over here and this is just a low area there's another development back there no drainage easement between no way to really do a gravity system here and there have been a couple contractors that took a stab at this and he had already paid thousands of dollars and they couldn't get it going so i said well let's just do a double double pump system here and this is one of my this is like my second double pump system that i had ever done and you know i would have done a couple things different like i don't know why i did a three inch to a inch and a half reducing y here instead of just you know pitting this pump on the tail end and just doing a inch and a half to three inch reducing coupler but whatever it still pushes the water this way i'm sure water sits in there but it, it's still it's throwing the water this way it's much better than a t um besides the point the electric was um done nicely everything's waterproof um actually one of these four inch corrugated his pool drain line because we just tied in whatever you had pre-existing over here because the whole house was the whole big house was draining off into this area as well so these pumps are really probably being overworked and that could have been a reason why they failed for sure but um, i've heard stories i'm sure you guys have too and i myself have just exhausted the m98 i mean just been in a situation where it was much much um or excuse me way too much water and for one pump and it just soldiers through and i've had those last years and years and years so you know as long as you give the customer a disclaimer saying hey these might not last as long as something else then that's fine that's why we went with two because um the biggest thing that fails is the switch um typically and that's what i've seen the most failures from but i have never seen a failure from too much water in that housing there so interesting uh, to say the least but yeah his pool drains in here as well so these pumps are getting chlorine through them every once in a while when he drains his pool so yeah they're they're definitely getting uh, abused to say the least but he's fine with that it's easy to heat shrink splice another pump in here um and he's got electrical conduit um, going all the way to the service yard over in this area so you know and that's about 14 inches on the ground so everything's code everything's nice and um i have right here for this basin i have a 24 inch dual wall culvert pipe that i've stood up and i've put a vapor barrier and put a concrete uh, bottom in and trial that out let that dry and then what i have is a poly lock 24 inch um uh, hdpe i'm pretty sure that's what it is anyways a 24 inch corrugated uh, cap and i use that as a top and that way i mean you could pretty much drive my truck over it it's so freaking strong so just want to make sure no one's stepping through it and those flimsy basins at home depot and Lowe's are just not it so um yeah there's really not a whole lot else to this i'm gonna go and put this top back on and then um, send you guys off. Yeah, yeah, it's dry. I can't complain. We'll let this rock and let me know how it do does tomorrow, you know? Okay. And if it does well, then we'll leave it, but, uh, if we have another issue, then we'll take a different course, you know? We'll take a different route, but I don't think so. No. You know, when I, I put these things under the water before I plugged them in, and uh, they, uh, no bubbles. So that's good. <laughs> that's a good thing. Absolutely. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate you um, watching the video, and if you have anything to add, let me know. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to hear what you have to say. Uh, comment, um, like if you like the video, subscribe if you want to see more videos. I'll be messing with drainage stuff and kind of showing you guys my systems and failures and everything else. But I personally haven't seen this before. And yeah, we're going to leave the basketball court here. We got a big rain tomorrow. We'll see how the system does. And um, yeah, thanks for tuning in. Peace.